And then she goes, when I hooked up with your brother, he was the exact same. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> what? So I find out. You had no that, idea? No, none at all. She she knew she was what she was doing, but yeah, so it became tunnel buddies with my brother uh, without <laughs> without knowing it. <sighs> It's no accident that sounds like you're leveling up in a video game. 48% of 18 to 29 year olds have an online dating profile. Make them work for it. 45% of people say they're more frustrated with this form of dating than hopeful. There are so many people you can connect with. Should I swipe right? Swipe wrong. Swipe wrong. Setting the record straight on dating apps. Everyday people telling everyday stories of the swipe right world with your host, Chaos. Well, I know he had a good time. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and of course, good night. How you doing? Sleep tight. Uh, we got a whole bunch of people who want to tuck a whole bunch of other people in. It's all over the place. There's a lot of tucking in and tuck. Tuck, tuck it in. A whole bunch of it going on, which is fantastic. It's the holiday season. You might as well just be merry all the time. Welcome to the Swipe Wrong Podcast. I am your host. I am chaos. I am the guy who's going to get you to the next level. I always say it. I'm going to be that guy. Someone's got to be that guy without totally being that guy. We are the uh, we're the number one podcast amongst people who think adult entertainment is still charades. Not the type of adult entertainment we talk about on this show. Uh, hopefully you guys are having an awesome holiday season. The malls haven't driven you entirely crazy. Things aren't going nuts. Uh, I do know that uh, dating actually picks up during this time because some people get pretty lonely through the holidays. And uh, there's there's a little bit more special cuddling that happens. So if you have some of that going on and you want to share what your experiences are like, Give us a call, 317-426-6616, and I would be happy to listen and uh, uh, get your stories and put them on the on the show because uh, we're trying to get everybody's story. That's our number one goal. Like, follow, subscribe, share with your friends. Let them know what's going on. Just say, hey, there's this clown who talks about some fun stuff, and we enjoy his company. That would be me. Hopefully, that'd be me. I I can take Christmas lists or Christmas gifts. I'm I'm on on cards, letter, yeah, just whatever. Best nation is absolutely positively donation. Just don't ever forget that. Best nation's donation. Um, hopefully Santa brings you what you're looking for. Uh, whether you were naughty or nice, the naughty list needs to be published. Let's just say that. The naughty list needs to be published. That way we can all meet the type of people we're looking for. Uh, shout out to Jay. Jay, uh, make sure you listen to the Palin Place. Uh, his show is amazing. It's a lot of good time, but he is the one who makes this sound so much better uh, and uh, just makes it what it is. I couldn't definitely not do this without this that guy for sure. So check him out. This week, we get some pretty cool stories. Gentleman actually has his own podcast, which I'm going to jump on that one. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure when that one will, 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 will be out there, but uh, it's a little bit of collaboration piece, but he has got an interesting story. That's for sure. Uh, I think you guys will find this fun and entertaining and absolutely, totally enjoy it. Um, if uh, if there is anything, really just know that we appreciate you guys listening and uh, sharing the show. Uh, we do pretty good on YouTube, so you can see this face on YouTube if you like, or if you don't want to see this face and just hear the voice, uh, we're on all podcast platforms, so you can you can take a listen there. Um, so you know how we go. Uh, sit back, relax, put your feet up, grab your popcorn, uh, give buttered, throw some caramel in there, throw some sea salt, whatever, whatever you want to throw in there. Make it make it all good and enjoyable because you're about to pop your popcorn. If you're in traffic, please enjoy the drive. Hopefully the commute gets a little better. Please, please, please do not hit that person next to you. And enjoy this one as we call it Same as Your Brother. Disclaimer, the views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the speaker and do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions or any entities they represent.
This podcast is about dating experiences. It is not to say one dating app is better or worse than another. Usually the first thing I like to start off is like, how how long have you been fucking around with the apps? Um, Since 2008. 18 or so i uh i kind of missed a lot of the early stuff with tinder and everything but i uh i was together with my kid's mom still okay. and then we split up in 2018 and i started uh dicking around with uh tinder and stuff uh a few months later and ended up having a couple pretty pretty wild experiences on it uh, <laughs> that's like tender that should be tender's mantra that should be their tagline welcome to tender you will have many awesome crazy insane stupid experiences on here yes i mean i've i had a couple fun ones but for the most part it has been i don't know if it's the city i live in we were murder capital of canada for a brief time so there's <laughs> maybe there's something in our fucking water or i don't know but it's it's nuts here and i had a girl show up for a first date with an overnight bag and she i try start dropping like instantly i'm dropping hints trying to be like oh like uh so like uh how how'd you get here and blah 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 she's like oh i took the bus and i'm like okay yeah and she's like yeah so uh the bus isn't going to be running later. And I'm like, Oh, well, uh, I you know, there's always like cabs and she's just like, Oh yeah, I don't know. I've had, I've had some sketchy experiences with the cabs in the city. And I'm just like, I'm sh I'm sure you have like whatever, like giving her the benefit of the doubt. And I'm just like, Oh, well I'll get you. Maybe I'll get you an Uber later. And she's not over for more than five minutes. And she, I'm looking for something on the TV where, chit-chatting a bit and i'm getting just mad crazy vibes from her and before i can even ask her what what she does for a living she stands up and goes it's really warm in here oh no. and pulls her pants down and takes oh. her pants off and folds them up and sits down on the couch and just leans oh. back and i'm like what the fuck is going on here like oh. what have i gotten myself into and so um, I'm, I'm a little bit too polite at this point in my life to just tell her to get the fuck out. <laughs> and so um, I end up I end up sleeping with her and she I, f I forgot to mention this part, but she's quite a bit heavier than she looked like in any of her pictures. She was she gave me a lot of real tricky angles and she was probably a solid 80 pounds heavier than any of her pictures looked. Uh -huh. Dude, you said she gave me a lot of tricky angles. I'm assuming you mean with the camera, not in bed. That's what we're yes. talking. Yeah, yeah okay. no, with no. Camera, her with only angle angles, in gotcha. bed was flat on her back. Uh, yeah, and that was sounds like 80 pounds. Yeah, that sounds no. Yeah, okay, that's camera angles for sure. Yeah, jeez. And yeah, and so I'm. Um, I felt too bad to just kick her out, and so. I start pretending like I'm not feeling too well and she cra she's crashing in my bed and I go and I'm laying on the couch and I'm, I'm just like, okay, I, like first thing in the morning, like I gotta get her out on the bus. I gotta figure something out. Like I gotta, I gotta get her out. And so I cannot remember what I told her, but I get her out real early. I walk her to the bus stop and she clearly thinks she's killed it and she's not reading the vibes at all. She's trying to make plans. And I'm just like, yeah, I got a lot going on, but like, you know, you the typical <laughs> shit. I'm like, I'll let you know, I'll let you know. And then as soon as she gets on the bus and she's like gone enough, she texts me and she's like, Oh, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Hey, look, like it's not working out. I'm sorry. And, I'm just like, you seem nice, but like, no, I'm sorry. And then she's just like, oh, so you sleep with me and just use me and blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, no, 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 no. Look, I was like, you came into my house and you weren't there a total of five minutes before you took your pants off. And I did, I was too awkward to tell you to leave and I'm sorry, but 
like oh this is on God. this is on you this ain't on me oh. and she just goes going up one the one side of me down the other and then she goes when I hooked up with your brother, he was the exact same. I'm like, whoa, what? <laughs> so I find out. You had no that, idea? No, none at all. She she knew she was what she was doing. But yeah, so it became tunnel buddies with my brother uh, without, <laughs> without knowing it. <sighs> oh, dude, I've never heard that term before in the first place. I've never heard tunnel buddies. Eskimo brothers, yes, I've heard that one many times, but tunnel buddies, no. But you're not even Eskimo brothers. You're real brothers who are also Eskimo brothers. What the fuck? How long were you talking to her on the apps, bro? Um, Like two weeks, like a while. Like okay, she, okay. Was, she, she... Or no, I think it was like two days, honestly. Like okay, damn, really? I, okay, two weeks I can get because like two weeks there's a lot of build up, there's a lot of exchange. You get to know each other, and you're kind of going back and forth. All right, see that two days. I mean, to, to show up at your house, I guess. I mean, this, the, the the sleep with part is is whatever. You know, that's 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 whatever. But to show up at your house with an overnight bag, there was no indication whatsoever she was going to do that. No, like I just the, like she was just coming over to watch Netflix. Like I was just like, okay, yeah, we're just gonna hang out. And this was right. probably like, like I'd been on one dinner date off of the app, and other than that, this was like my first like experience. I was like, okay, like wow, Netflix and chill, you know? But yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. The literal mean. This wait, say that again. You had been one one other date from the app. So this was yeah, your second date. I had gone date? on. I had gone on a dinner date, and then this girl. Uh, it went disastrously. It was just like super awkward, and we we were we were no no chemistry at all. And so I was right. just like, okay, hey, whatever. And then this girl messages me, and she was just super forward, being like, hey, let's hang out and whatever. And I'm gonna co I'll come over. We'll watch Netflix. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. She looked hot from her pictures and she right. she's very, very good at photography, but <laughs> not good at much else. Oh, bro, dude, this isn't like, this is a good one. This like, oh, well, no, it's not like, well, how do I even say it's going to make a, a good show, a good episode, horrible experience for you. I'm sure. I mean, I mean, the sex sounded like it was a little suspect. The camera angle. I mean, like, did you just, did you think about it at the end going, Hey, can I, can I, can you help me out with some photography lessons? Did you throw that one in there at all? I mean, that would be interesting. I know I was on I was too too busy trying to get her out of my life. I oh. no I, uh, oh, no, I there was red know, flags galore with that one. Dude, uh that is and this was did you say this was 2018? Uh 2018 or early 2019, yeah. Uh damn man, that's crazy. Did you ever hear from her again? Uh, she tried adding me on Facebook and reaching out to me at one point, and I was just like, block, no, like, no, bro. Like, I like I keep echoing in my head. That's exactly what your brother was like, man. That's just totally in my head. That is insane. Your jaw must have totally hit the ground. Oh, yeah. Like, I was, I was, I was mind blown. I was like, holy shit. I was like, that is. That is, I, 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 I was pretty grossed out. Like, I, I, I don't know. No offense to my brother, but I know where he's been. And I was like, mm, last guy I want to know I've shared a, shared a hole with. Did you call, would you call, when you called him and told him about this, what did he say? He, he's going to find out about it for the first time when I get him to listen to this. <laughs> Dude, he's blowing up your phone right now when he hears this episode. He's like, oh, my God. He's he, First of all, he's like, who was she? Oh, my God, dude. That's insane. So, like, your first date was awful chemistry at dinner. Your second date was just in, insane, it sounds like. Dude, you must have been afraid to go out and date at all again, huh? Um, I had a couple weird experiences after but nothing too noteworthy i had one girl who we 
we chatted for like probably like four weeks and then I went out and got drunk with some friends and uh, uh, she knew I was out drinking and she asked me if I had gotten home yet all of a sudden and I was like yeah and then she came over and I was drunk and kind of awkward and sure. she uh, we ended up doing stuff and like sure. she clearly had fun it was the evidence was on the bed but uh, <laughs> nice the minute she she like finished she rushed out and i was like okay well i had fun and blah blah blah. and she's like yeah i had fun i'll talk to you later and she gets in her car and before she even drove off she unmatched with me on the app and really? i was just like oh okay wow. that didn't i was like that i wasn't expecting that and then uh kind of just had a few n- unnoteworthy dates between then and then one other real real crazy one where uh this girl from Colombia she was a smoke show yeah but uh there were uh some red flags i didn't know about until we met up for the first time that became very evident very fast so at first uh we're just hanging out and then uh she keeps like sitting, moving closer and stuff and just being very flirty. And she's like, Oh, in my country, if somebody seen us like this, it would be like, we'd be in trouble and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. Like, I don't really know anything about Colombia, but okay. Like that's, that's interesting. And like, right. We're talking more. And then she drops that she's got five kids Oh, wow. and I'm instantly okay. like, okay, well I've got two kids. I don't, I don't need to be looking after seven children. I, uh, I, I'm out. So I'm, I drop hints like, oh, uh, next bus is coming soon. I should probably uh, get going. And she's like, oh, you don't think I'm beautiful? Like, oh, blah, okay. all this stuff. And I'm just like, oh, geez. And she's like, just please stay and hang out with me longer. And She's like, come, let's go for a walk. So we're like sitting at these picnic tables and we're going for a walk and we're walking across this park. And she's like goading me towards the dugout at the baseball diamond. And (laughs) I'm kind of just like, um, what a weird, but like she kind of just following her and walking and she, we're, we're sit down in the dugout and she starts making out with me and I'm like, okay, like whatever. And, make out with her a little bit and then i'm like okay yeah my bus is probably coming soon um may uh i should probably get going and she stands up and she grabs the bar in front of the dugout and she kind of like takes uh like position with her ass Uh out towards me and she's just like, like do you like do you like what you see and i'm like yeah you're you're very beautiful but and she starts to pull down her pants and i'm like oh what the fuck and i look over and there's a group of kids walking oh no and i'm just like um um and i start like snapping and pointing over and she looks over and she pulls up her pants real quick and she's just like oh my and like kind of like dawns on her like that she's being a little bit nuts i think (laughs) and she starts trying to suggest that we should find somebody so, uh, somewhere more private and trying to get like she's not sit- I'm like oh well your house she's like no my kids are home and I'm like <laughs> okay well like I'm I should get going and she starts crying and crying oh. and she's just like you hate me and like her she's got a very thick accent and she very beautiful woman but oh Man. my god like it was wow she, she starts talking about um her ex-boyfriend who's in jail and like all these things and i'm just like okay okay i gotta go i gotta go and yeah. i just left this beautiful colombian woman <laughs> crying in uh, a dugout is that what you crying left in the dugout <laughs> and Whoa. i just sat there and i was like who 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 do i call right now and i i called my my buddy tevin and i was just like man this was fucked up and he's he's instantly just like dude 
you need to get off Tinder. He's like, the shit, like, you are having awful luck on there. And I was just yeah. like, kind of, yeah. I was like, it might be time for a break. Yeah. Dude, but how, it was. How soon was that one from, from, uh, from, you know, your brother's keeper? I mean, how, how soon? <laughs> how that soon one that? would have been, I think 2000. And it was just before I guess it was 2019. It was just before COVID. Okay. Okay. So it was a little yeah. bit later. So it was a year, year or so later, at least, right? Yeah. Maybe a year and a half or so later. Okay. So it wasn't like three months later or two months later where you're going, man, I really am attracting some of the, the, the weirdness that's going on. Okay. So dude, tell me you had some like good connections in between. Um, I honestly, I no, not hugely. Um, I had a couple fun flings here and there. Nothing serious has ever really come. Okay. Um, I actually like, so the last time I had Tinder, it was like right before my buddy Tevin's uh, wedding. Uh-huh. And I downloaded it just cause I was like, you know what? I'm g- probably going to have some good pictures from this wedding or something, blah, blah, blah. And, like I'll uh, download it, give it another shot after like this whole thing. So I downloaded it a couple of days before the wedding, and uh, this girl starts hitting me up. She's also attending this wedding, and she was a uh, guy I knew's ex girlfriend who me and him didn't really get along. Uh, he ended up dating. He was like a good friend of mine who dated my kid's mom right after we broke up and stuff, and then. This chick dated him a while back, and I guess she was like, oh, I'm going to hook up with Brody at the wedding. And she sees me on Tinder, and I'm 99% sure she reported me and got me banned. because I I was on for maybe two hours. I start, she starts messaging me a couple nights before the wedding. And then I go on the night she messages me, and... I'm banned from Tinder. We hook up at the wedding and then she starts talking after the wedding. I'm like, so was this a one night thing? Like whatever, like, cause she asked me, she's like, this isn't revenge sex, is it? And I was like, what you, you came on to me. I was totally like oblivious until she outright was like, yeah, let's have sex. And yeah. then I was like, oh, you're into me. And then, so a few weeks after the wedding, she had um, been, t- we'd been talking and she, her ex fiance, well, she's seen him on Tinder and she reported him. She's like, oh, I, re- I just reported him and said that he uh, sexually assaulted me or something. And the guys get insta banned for that. And I was like, uh... wait a second, you started mm-hmm. messaging me. The day I got Tinder, I get banned two hours later without having matched or talked to anybody. Then you come on to me at the wedding and on and on and on. I was kind of like, oh, damn. Oh, Oh, my gosh, bro. Yeah. And like the whole thing at the wedding was just, I'm the most uh, oblivious human being ever. The whole night I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm a groomsman. It's my job to like, just do what I got. Like, I'm going to make sure this wedding goes smoothly. I have fun. But like the drunk bride, the bridesmaids got fucked up. One of them was like puking her guts out. So I'm like taking care of this chick. And the other chick was helping me take care of her. And so then throughout the night, I was like playing with her kid during the reception because her kid was the only kid there. He's walking around with his Pokemon cards and he keeps dropping them. And so I helped them out. And her brain, I think, is going like, oh, this guy's stepdad material. And oh, then so wow. the rest of the night, she's like kind of kind of like hanging out with me. And I didn't really notice anything. And I'm I'm the most oblivious fucking guy ever. There was this the super drunk bridesmaid during uh, dinner. She looks at me and she looks at the other bridesmaid and goes, he's hot. I'd fuck him. Would you fuck him? And she just goes beat red. And I was pretty drunk at this point, too. And I just like looked at her like jokingly and was just like, yeah, would you? 
And she didn't say anything. And I was just like, ah, oh, nah, she's out of my league. She wouldn't, she wouldn't sleep with me. Like, like the, the other chick's just drunk. I'm not hot. Like I'm average at best. And, right. and so then I go to leave for the night and my two friends are like, oh, we're going to go home. We have a trailer here. If you want to stay in our trailer, you can stay here for the night. So you don't have to drive back in the morning. Awesome. And uh, my buddy was going to drive me home. And I'm like, uh no nah, i'd rather sleep in my own bed and so this chick was gonna have to sleep next to the pukey chick oh, and so yeah. i was like oh hey if you want that trailer i'm not gonna stay here tonight so i'm gonna head home you can have my trailer and she's like well i won't sleep out in the trailer with you but i'll come out to the trailer with you and i was like wait what and i was like that's not what and then like my drunk brain starts processing I'm like oh Oh, okay. Oh. okay. I see where this is going. Right. And, and everything else the, from the night just makes so much more sense at that point. But yeah, right. this chick, I'm 90% sure ended up getting me banned from Tinder. <laughs> well, that she, she knew the strategy. I mean, she knew how to do it. That's funny how you connected the dots on that, though. Like it was, yeah, it was when she, she just straight up told, like, we were just chit chatting one day. Like she was texting me while I was at work and she's like, oh, I seen blah, blah, blah on, on uh, Tinder. And so I reported him. And so he's probably banned now. She's like, I did it to Alex too. Just so I hope you uh, know that. And I was just like, oh, okay. So I guess, let me ask you this. Like this one, I haven't had much experience with. So were you banned and did they, did they let you back on? Did they say, Hey, let's hear your side of the story. Or are you just no. got banned? Are you just straight uh, off? For good? I appealed. I, I tried to appeal it. And they said, because I broke, they wouldn't even tell me what I did wrong. Um, I broke the terms of service they said. And so that I cannot uh, make an account and, I tried to make an account when uh, my phone number changed and I had it for a little bit. And then they banned that account uh, as soon as I uploaded one of my old pictures. I guess oh, they have they like, yeah, they probably have like sure. an algorithm where like, if you do make a new account and you have yeah. one of your old pictures, it flags it somehow. Holy shit, dude. Like that's like, all right. So on the, on the legit side, like, let's just say that's not the case or let's say that is exactly why you got banned was because she said something you have like you have guys or just even if a guy does it to a girl like now they can't like say their side of the story and say hey this was kind of bullshit this wasn't what happened and tinder's like we don't give a fuck you're out that's that's i mean thank god there's not one dating site out there and there's like fifty five thousand of them it seems like the thing with that that's so dirty yeah that's true but like there's any tinder affiliated one apparently you're get banned from so like hinge hinge is also owned by tinder so yeah oh shit yeah i mean with my with my experience on the app like i'm i I, i'm can't say i'm missing out on a lot like yeah I'm, she might have saved me some uh, from a few more <laughs> from a few more girls trying to drop their pants on me. Are you still are you still on are you still dating single and on the apps? Uh I am single right now. Yeah, I'm not really on the apps. I I might be on the Facebook dating thing because oh, I sure. forgot to delete it, but Yeah, sure. That if I am, I have not checked it in a while. <laughs> That's fair. So I was just saying, like, I mean, if you if you, if that's gone and you're still out there, you know, on the apps, uh, just see if you're you having better luck. I guess that's what I was going to ask with other than the madness that you're finding on Tinder. It sounds like Tinder really, really found the crazy for you. Um, I mean, I've, I haven't really had any luck. No, I have mostly since the last little while, it's just been a lot of starting a conversation getting to the point where it's like okay yeah let's make some plans and then just yeah nothing's coming of it just a lot of i don't know i I think it's just the facebook dating thing it's it's not the best one and i i haven't really i haven't really tried any other ones other than uh i was on bumble for a while and yeah never i don't think i ever had any matches on it the the Facebook dating one, I think, is interesting for a couple. Like, there's there's a, a pro and a con, like a big pro and a big con to it that that I've seen. The big pro is like if you match with somebody, you can 
validate them. Like you can say, Hey, this is all right. Let me find their pro try. You know, if you dig deep enough, you can find their profile. I'm like, all right, this isn't a bot. This is a real person. So at least you have that. The con side to it is it really just doesn't care about if you put parameters in, like, I don't want to match with anybody 30 miles away from me or 30 oh, kilometers away from me. And you'll be like, you'll be matching hundreds of miles away. Like it just doesn't care. Not at all. I find right? it brutal. And like, it, I find it's just broken. Like I don't get yeah. when I have been talking to someone I'm interested in, it just dies off because one of us doesn't get the notifications all of a sudden. Yeah, that's or... fair. That's fair. Yeah. I got to move out of that into the text for sure as quick as possible, but yeah, it's really weird, man. It's, it's really weird how that one's set up, but it's free and you know, it's just really yep. full of ads from what I understand. So dude, that's nuts, man. You've had some experiences. So do, what do you, do you do anything different when you like, I know you're not hitting too many dates now, but like from those experiences and stuff, are you starting to like, I don't know, vibe check it a little bit differently or background check it or anything like that? Um, I definitely do not invite girls over to my house for a first date anymore <laughs> that's a um, that's a lesson learned okay yeah yeah i know i feel it out with coffee usually nowadays um, um but uh i don't know i mostly just I'm, every girl i've gone on a date with the last couple of years is just somebody i've met in person and yeah they've had fun but haven't just met the right girl yet sure that's that's life so you've met them i guess as the term is making this rounds in the wild these are the ones that you've kind of met not on the apps yeah mostly um yeah i uh, met a couple girls through like uh mutual friends okay. or uh uh one girl literally just added me on facebook and was because like i caught i commented on a mutual friends thing and she was just like that guy's kind of cute oh that's cool uh yeah just stuff like that but nothing old school i don't know I, yeah you kind of miss the tinder life sometimes but sure with my like i said with my string of luck it's <laughs> it might be best that i got out of there Dude, that's probably the truth. I mean, it is like uh, so many times you hear people say it's like a video game, though. The swiping, it's like you're in there, you're swiping. It's it's almost like you're trying to get a new high score. So I mean, I can I can see being almost addicted to the um, the interaction that that can come with it. Um, also, like you're saying, like your your uh, your experiences on there were were not the best. So it might save you from uh, I don't know a few. Uh, bags being shown up on your doorstep i mean you, your next step is be like next time you match with a girl call your brother and see if you've been out with her <laughs> yeah yeah no it's it's real in in our in our small city with it, 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 you, you gotta like it's everybody knows everybody we, we're a little city like hundred and thirty thousand, and it's like it's big enough that we're considered a city but like small enough that like everyone knows each other yeah no kidding really damn bro that's pretty crazy to be honest with you that was, that was like i don't know i can't imagine what that's like where if you needed to find out about somebody you probably just ask anywhere from two to three different people and they probably would have a pretty good idea on that person already that's your background check huh i mean i were so i worked at a methadone clinic for about two years and three different girls I went on dates with ended up walking through those doors. No shit. Yeah. Wow. One of them, I was like a girl I knew from high school. Two of them were girls I had met through Tinder who seemed like relatively normal. Both of them were nurses, actually. Who uh -huh. seemed very well adjusted. And uh, yeah, no, they uh, just didn't end up working out or anything like we went on a couple dates and it was just like oh like whatever and then right. uh the looks on their faces as they they come in a little bit strung out uh withdrawing and they're talking to you for like a couple minutes and then your voice starts to sound familiar to them and then the look of recognition comes on and it, oh, you, you, you you don't say anything but like oh it's it, it was pretty awkward no shit that had to oh, be yeah. kind of like a, you talk about aha moments man that must have been a couple of aha moments for them too 
So one of them realized the first time she came in and the other one, she was coming for about three months. And then it was, it finally clicked on her. I, uh, I guess my beard grew in enough where I looked like when she, we had uh, hung out and okay. she literally asked, she's like, how long have you worked here? And I was like, <laughs> oh, like a year. And she's just, I was like, I literally signed you up on the shit. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh no. It, yeah. It was, it was interesting. See, that's insane. That small town. What I mean, uh, what's that country song that whoever is Brian Aldean or whoever, I think it's it, yeah. it, it, a small town or whatever. <laughs> bro. Yeah. bro, is that your town? Is that what I'm hearing? Pretty much. Oh man, dude, you're fucking awesome, man. I'm sorry. You've had these crazy experiences though. Oh man. I mean, at, at least I've had some experiences. That's, yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 At least you have, I'm sure there's more to come. I mean, I'm, I'm totally sure. I mean, when you're still out there actively dating, like, okay. So 2018, we talked about one COVID came. Do you think like, is, is there any difference that you feel between now and prior to COVID on how you date? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I didn't have a whole lot of experiences before COVID yeah. happened. I found during the pandemic, like I rushed into a lot, like that was the only time in since I've been single where I had like steady relationships, honestly, like I gotcha. met one girl, I ended up going over to her house and uh, we hung out a bit and then I started basically crashing on her place because it was close to my work and That's cool. we hung out for a few months and then met her on, I think, uh, yeah, it was hinge. Yeah. And then, um, and then there was another girl who I had met, I think also on, or no, I think it was on Bumble. It was, uh, hung out with her for a few weeks and then she was, so she was a strange one. She was she was very smart and very nice, but then she had some she had some traumas from a previous relationship. And okay. uh, when we had sex the first time, she started crying and was like, "Can we stop?" Uh -huh. And I stopped. And then like I was fine with it and whatever. And then she's like, looks at me and goes. I hope like that you can last longer than that though. And blah, blah, blah. I was like, wait, Whoa. what? I was like, oh, uh, I, I was just like really weird Whoa. whiplash. And I was kind of like, I, 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 I didn't finish. We stopped because you asked me to stop. Wow. That's weird. And yeah. So I was kind of just like, I should, I should run. This girl seems <laughs> yeah. seems a little unhinged. So yeah. that was, I think that was, yeah, that was probably the first girl I dated after I broke up with my kid's mom. Okay. Wasn't the first girl I hooked up with, but it was the right. first girl I dated. And then first relationship. Yeah, then there was one girl out of who lived out of town who I briefly dated, who I that was the one who added me on uh on uh Facebook there. And uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. You've had some stuff, bro. You've had some stuff like I uh, there's I, I definitely hear a good handful from certain people. Yours yours definitely hits the spectrum. I mean, uh, that's for sure. Like I would be a little like I, I I think I'd be in the wild too, to be honest, as opposed to the apps. But even the, in the wild, it's even, yeah. Say even in the wild, it sounds like you're running into it too. It's I, there's something in the water in this city, man. Like <laughs> I don't know, like. Bro, you come over to the states. We'll see if we can't. Uh, I don't know. Like, just just find find a find something a little bit more uh, less crazy. How's that? Hopefully, like Hopefully. I mean, I, with, with my experiences in the U.S., it hasn't been a whole <laughs> lot better. Honestly, I met some. Yeah. I think I just attract the crazy ones, man. Like <laughs> it's exactly why I ended up starting the show. Every time I go out with somebody, that's exactly what they say. I think I just attract the crazy. It's the same <laughs> thing that like it's just like some people just feel like there's a target on their back and Robin Hood is slinging arrows with the crazy. It just feels that way sometimes. And oh yeah, I, man. Cupid's got it out for me. I must have yeah. fucking uh I'm, oh, I must have done something to fucking piss him off. Like I don't uh, know. 
he's uh yeah i mean like it, the right one will show up when th- at the right time in the meantime it's like man i went on this journey to find this chick and and uh you're gonna be in a yeah. great relationship and you're like wow well, it was crazy but it was worth it oh yeah i just ain't built for this hookup culture <laughs> man like i'm a yeah. Yeah, I, I'm a I'm a monogamous built for monogamy guy who just like life is just like nah man you're you revolving door. <laughs> that's pretty cool, man. That's actually that's that's pretty pretty solid. You don't hear that too often, and I I dig the shit out of that, homie. I really do. Thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. So I I forget you said in the beginning. Are you still doing the podcast that you did? Oh yeah, yeah. My podcast is called Fandoms. Uh, well, fandoms with Brody Otway, uh, cause somebody had stolen fandoms in the time that right. I came up with it and actually put it into play. But we interview people about whatever they're a fan of from like stamps to nipple clamps from fucking fantasy books, the fantasy football. Right. We've done things from, uh, uh, Legos to anime to sports to bands and, Nice. Yeah, we pretty much just do whatever topic uh, we can find guests who want to talk about it. Come on. And if anybody out there is sounds or if it sounds interesting to anybody out there, then I mean, hit me up at uh, pod.fandoms at gmail.com, I guess. Nah, dude, that's what I was going to say. Pimp it out. So let me ask you this. So fandoms, what you, you created it, you started the show and then what you went to release and then someone else had fandoms out there already. Is that right? So I had initially come up with the idea like years ago and I was just too lazy to like, actually, like I tried to get, get local guests and just couldn't manage to find people. And it wasn't until I started, like I finished cancer treatment and then I was like, I'm going to get my ass in gear and I'm going to finally do this. Like I love, I just love talking to people about whatever they're passionate about and hearing why they love it. And I was like, I'm just going to, interview people and get their experiences as a fan of whatever they're a fan of. And then I go and somebody had taken just fandom. So I, Mm. I pull, I I was like, ah, I've been stuck on this name forever. I was like fandoms with Brody Otway. And so, yeah, I don't know. We, 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 We might change the name at some point, but we're, Right now we're fandoms with Brody Otway. So, dude, I'll tell you, it's a little. It, mine's mine's similar. Like uh, my buddy and I put the show together, and you know the name just I don't know, just it came. I don't know, maybe after a few drinks, it popped in my head or whatever, and I shared it with him. It was like, all right, let's do this. So we put together. I think we had. I think we probably had about five episodes, six episodes in the can. We were getting ready to drop promos and shit. And uh, put it on iTunes and, and Amazon and Spotify. And as we're dropping and waiting for it to come out, there was another swipe wrong. And uh, we both just kind of like, like, it wasn't like we had looked before we even uh, like, like put it together and there wasn't one. So between the time that that was and we went to go post, someone else had, had put one out. And we're like, no shit. And we're just like, fuck it. Let's just, you know, the world's big enough for two swipe wrong. So fuck it. Um, and since I think that one stopped putting stuff out and, and we've been going for uh, about 18 months now, but it's weird to hear like your story sounds something like, man, I hadn't heard anybody else run into that. I'm pretty sure the other fandoms is no longer releasing episodes. I there looked and it looked like it's been a while. So yeah. hopefully we're not stepping on anybody's toes with that. We we don't have a huge viewer base yet, but we're getting there. We Apparently we're hitting it in Australia of all places. Isn't that funny how you can see where it hits and you're like, oh, right? what? it's clicking there. No kidding. Huh, right. Interesting. It's, yeah. It's, it's kind weird. of, kind of funny. Cause I listen to a lot of Australian podcasts. So I guess they're sure. some, somebody's uh, somebody there feeling the love back. Sure. I'll get your Canadian true crime up in there too, man. I like that one. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 That girl's a few too. good Canadian produced podcasts here. Yeah. Totally. Well, bro, I appreciate you taking the time to come on, man. I know, uh, I know we had, it took a minute to connect, but man, it was well worth it. And one, just to get to meet you and these fucking stories, bro. Well done. Thank you. I had a blast coming on. It's my first time being a guest on someone else's podcast. So I'm, I'm glad you're happy with it. I was pretty, pretty nervous. (laughs) 
Thank you for being along for the ride of Swipe the Swipe Wrong podcast. Remember, everyday people telling everyday stories of the Swipe Right world. Uh, the show is uh, produced by Jay Pelham. He is the host of Pelham Place. Uh, so make sure to check that out. Also, I am uh, Chaos, the host of Chaotic Commentary. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow, tell a friend about the pod. Uh, and uh, if you have uh, something that you want to share, please, please, we want to hear from everybody and get everybody's stories as much as we possibly can. Uh, email us at swipewrongpod at gmail.com. Uh, give us a call, leave us a voicemail, let us know if it's okay to call you back. 317 426 6616. Thanks for being along for the ride. And next week, uh, the saga continues. <laughs>